two came off the bye week. This was a big game. The Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati looking to take advantage of a team that really hasn't technically gotten back into full strength yet, so to say, after the Bengals struggled to begin the year. And Seattle was unable to come out with a victory on the road in Paycor Stadium. I was kind of shocked. I was so used to calling it Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio's Paycor Stadium, uh, now where the Bengals call home. A 13 to 17 loss on the road in Cincinnati. This was a tough one. Uh, the first drive that the Seahawks had in this game. Uh, the opening drive of the game itself was a touchdown drive. A lot of chunk plays, five plays of nine yards or more for Seattle. Uh, Kenneth Walker III was able to punch it up the gut uh, to score in this one with Jake Bobo in motion in front of him, or Bobo, um, which was it was really fun to see that. You think, all right, this is going to be a big game. The Bengals come out and score on the next drive immediately after, so you start thinking, oh, this is going to be a shootout. Uh, Seattle unable to respond on their following drive. Cincinnati scores a touchdown on their second drive of the game. And all of a sudden it's like, uh Oh, is this going to be, you know, whoever gets the ball last kind of thing. Have you already fallen in a hole? Uh, Seattle is able to hang on, um, go into the half down by four as they get a field goal from Jason Myers, uh, 55. Wait, nope. Yeah. A field goal from Jason Myers. And you're thinking, okay, uh, four, four points considering how you've kind of struggled after that first touchdown drive isn't a bad thing. There was some undisciplined play. Penalties were coming into uh, a factor in this game. The Seattle secondary was kind of getting played around with a little bit, obviously, with that Cincinnati receiving core of T. Higgins, uh, Tyler Boyd, and Jamar Chase. It's going to be tough. Uh, it's going to be really tough. And they've got Irv Smith Jr. as their tight end, Joe Mixon as their running back, and then obviously Joe Mix, uh, Joe Burrow, sorry, uh, running the show. So in the second half, uh, the Seahawks defense really clamped up. They only allowed three points in the second half to Cincinnati. The only thing was that the Seahawks were only able to muster three points uh, as well uh, in the second half. So it's just. Uh, frustrating there at the end, the last two drives of the game, uh, the defensive line for Cincinnati was really able to tear into Seahawks, uh, the Seahawks offensive line that's dealing with a ton of injuries still got Charles back this Charles cross back this week. It didn't end up mattering. Uh, Geno Smith unable to come up with the game. Go, we'll go ahead. Touchdown at the time. Uh, and Seattle's win streak is snapped at three for our offensive player of the game. I went with Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett just continues to be a consistent elite force for the Seahawks at the wide receiver position. Six receptions for 94 yards in this game. No touchdown for uh, the real estate agent himself. But still, again, just the consistency and how how great of a target he is, um, is is such a big aspect of the Seahawks offense to have that, you know, proverbial safety valve. Uh, still a deep threat down the sideline uh, and just such a calm presence for the Seahawks at the pass catching position. Um, you know, Kenneth Walker had an all right game on the ground. Geno Smith, uh, 323 passing yards, but two interceptions on the day. Uh, one in the red zone, which was his first interception, in the red zone as the quarterback of the Seahawks. Um, and then the second interception they threw was a little bit more on DK Metcalf. Uh, DK and Gino had a miscommunication. DK stopped running his route, uh, or the route at least that Gino thought he was running, uh, and resulted in an interception. So on the defensive side of the ball, kind of tough. There wasn't anybody necessarily that stood out. Trey Brown, cornerback Trey Brown, had an interception um, in this game, which was nice to see uh, after he came off of the uh, – he was injured the last few games. Um uh, but Traymond Jones, Draymond Jones has a solid game. Three, uh, three tackles, all of them solo. One sack. It was his second sack of the season. Excuse me. One tackle for loss and one QB hit. Not a bad game uh, for the offseason signing. Nobody really, you know, did anything too big in this game per se uh, on the defensive side of the ball for Seattle. It was a tough injury week heading into this game. We'll go over the inactives list first. Uh, offensive lineman McClendon Curtis, offensive guard Damian Lewis out for this game. So again, uh, starting injuries, you're down to your starting lineman with Lewis and Abraham Lucas. O-lineman Raekwon O'Neal, linebacker Devin Bush, and quarterback cornerback Artie Burns. Uh, there were a few other injuries when it came to this game. Well, I'm a little bit low here. Ugh. Um we look at it here throughout the course of the week on October 9th. 
Uh, Jamal Adams was able to clear concussion protocol. Geno Smith's knee was fine. Charles Cross practiced, and he would obviously be able to play in the game, as I mentioned. Uh, Abraham Lucas not able to come off of injured reserve yet. Jason Peters uh, was talked about potentially playing either guard position or right tackle. He did not. Um, Phil Haynes was able to go in this game uh, after – oh, wait. Yes. He was able to go in this game. He would move to left guard, though, to allow Anthony Bradford, a draft pick from this year's crop of uh, draft picks, um, could play right guard, something he's more assimilated to. Uh, and quarterback Trey Brown did practice. So obviously you'll see a lot of these guys were able to get back. Uh, on the 14th, though, the team did place cornerback Kobe Bryant on the injured reserve. He is out at least four weeks um, dealing with a toe injury that's kind of hindered him for the last few games. Uh, head coach Pete Carroll did say it might be a bit before he comes back, which is unfortunate to hear uh, considering some of the plays that Brian has made. And obviously with injuries, again, you're testing your depth. You'd like to be at full strength all the time. It's not going to happen. Uh, in terms of injuries at the Bengals, thankfully, knock on the woods, um, Seattle was able to stay relatively healthy in this game. Uh, wide receiver DK Metcalf did leave at one point with a hip injury and was questionable, but did return to the game and did play the rest of that game. Uh, no sort of news as to if that's going to hinder him further, if that's going to happen. Again, we'll roll the banner. Follow us on the social media. Uh, to keep up with us when we get this news, you know, instantly as opposed to getting it every Monday. So, yeah, this was uh, this is a tough game for Seattle. I mean, you get such a strong effort defensively to only allow the three points in the second half uh, against this Bengals team that you know when they hit their stride, which they might be hitting it now after the last two wins that they got over Arizona, which. And then uh, the Seahawks, they could be hitting their stride. They very well could be finding themselves once again, finding their form. They're a dangerous team. That air attack is one of the best in the NFL. The Dolphins probably have the best air attack in the NFL right now. Um, but Cincinnati has a damn good passing attack as well. Um, so to lose to this team by four points isn't the biggest deal in the world. It's more the fact that you had the opportunity to win this game. Now, it's tough. Uh, I got a, a little bit of flack on Twitter about it, everybody, you know, kind of gave a lot of, a lot of criticism to Geno Smith. And, uh, you know, it wasn't his best game. It arguably was not his best game. There was at least one sack that he took that was on Geno spinning into it, as opposed to it being his lineman's fault. And again, Seattle's missing two starting caliber offensive linemen right now, but they've largely been able to do a decent job. They're not, they're, they weren't playing the New York giants this week, so they couldn't just steamroll everybody. Uh, but something at least from next gen stats from the NFL, the Bengals became the fourth defense to have four different players in rate, at least six pressures in a game since 2020. Sam Hubbard led the Bengals pass rush with nine pressers pressures, eight of which came against the Oxford right tackle, Jake Curran. So, Again, it wasn't like <laughs> these were things that were not any sort of issue. You've got Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson for Cincinnati who are excellent on the defensive line, and they were more than willing uh, and more than capable to go and exploit some of the guys who are getting starting positions who normally don't uh, for the Seahawks. So it was a tough one there. Um, hopefully Shane Walder and the offensive coordinator for Seattle is able to look at these things and you know, you're able to game plan around the deficiencies, at least injury wise. It'll be interesting to see if we get any sort of positive update on Abraham Lucas this week, uh, as well as Damian Lewis. It sounded like he was practicing this week, uh, but just wasn't able to go for this game. So again, these are important things. You know, it's it was important uh, that Seattle got that early bye week. At first, when you see it, when the schedule drops, you're thinking early bye week, not a great thing, considering you'd like to have that bye week late in the season so that, you know, you're gearing up for the playoffs and you can rest some guys and get ready for that final push. Seattle, with how banged up they've been early on, they were more than happy to take that early bye week. Uh, again, so overall, tough game. You know, the two touchdowns that you give up to Cincinnati on their first two drives of the game, uh, you know, Joe Burrow was pissed after the game. He did the post game interview on uh, on CBS, and he was not happy to talk about this game. So, again, it's it's not the fact that you lost to this Bengals team, uh, you know, in general or or by the score that you did. It's in the manner of which you lost this game. The fact that you should have won this game. You had those two possessions late 
uh, two possessions within six minutes of the game ending, and you very well should have had the go-ahead touchdown uh, or more points than the zero that you put up. So tough one, very tough, uh, frustrating as well. But you know this very well could be a loss that the Seahawks take and they're able to grow from going forward through the rest of the season. This is only uh, the three and two now. Yeah, so this is only week six. <laughs> week six of 18. So Seattle should be fine. I'm not too stressed about it. These are, uh, you know, there are things that they need to learn from. There were, oh, goodness, I don't even know what we were looking at penalties-wise here. I know that coming into this game, Seattle was the second most team, uh, second most penalized team per game in the NFL. Uh, so that's not great. Um, let's look at penalties. Seven penalties for 64 yards. Yeah, not not great. Probably should not have to deal with that. So, um, you know, you outgained the Bengals passing wise, rushing wise. Uh, you were one for five in the red zone, though. That just simply cannot happen. Um, that yeah, that kind of tells you a lot of the story. Uh, Seattle was five for 12 on third down. Cincinnati was only three for 11. So you did a lot good, but the mistakes that you made were big enough to overpower the positives that, you know, the positive things that you did. So anyway, uh, wrapping up with the Seahawks here uh, as a corresponding move to Kobe Bryant being placed on the injured reserve, the team elevated wide receiver um, Cody Thompson from the practice squad to take over that roster spot. So, Looking ahead, the Seahawks hit at a three and two record through six weeks of the NFL season. They're second in the NFC West, second in the NFC West because the Rams have three losses. The Rams have three wins and would hold the tiebreaker over the Seahawks. But because they have that extra loss, they are sitting behind Seattle in the standings. So Seattle sits at fourth. I mean, third, second. Pardon me. I'm all over the place in the NFC West. Looking ahead, their next game is October 22nd, back at home, back at Lumen Field versus the Arizona Cardinals. That is a 1.05 p.m. Pacific time kickoff on Fox. The Cardinals are 1-5 and five on the season. They have been somewhat competitive early on. They are 0-3 on the road so far. Uh, they did beat the Dallas Cowboys uh, for their only win, which is kind of funny to see. Um they did put up a decent fight against the Bengals uh, last week until since he was able to pull away. So, you know, this is not going to be a Cardinals team, despite the record that they have right now. Um, they're just going to be able to roll over, especially because this is going to be a divisional game. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals seem to always be a pain in the behind outside of that 50 to nothing game uh, a few years ago. Uh, wow. More than that's more than a decade ago. Never mind. <laughs> a few years. Oh, goodness. So. 